How y'all doing? Indian Peaks Explorer. Something a little different if you follow the channel. Tonight, it's cast iron. Different kind of iron. So, been mulling this one around, trying to do something a little different, open up the page a little bit. Um, I'm a big fan of cooking and I pretty much do probably 80, 90% of my cooking on um, cast iron. This is probably my newest piece. It's the only piece that's not what I'd call it a heritage piece. Uh, it's a lodge griddle. You know, the, here's my hand modeling. Ooh, ah. So you flip this over, and this thing is light. This thing weighs in at over 11 pounds. Then you got the little George Foreman grill on the backside. So it's a two sided deal. So, so what I'm doing with this one right now, <clears throat> being that's a new piece, I am not real happy. I like Lodge in general, but I'm not real happy with their newer stuff. If you feel this is sand castings are really rough. I mean, if you take and you run your over that, that's pretty loud. You know, you can probably hear this over here off the side. That's a skillet that's been around for with me for about 30, 35 years. So that versus that. Now over time, this will smooth out as you as you use your utensils on it. But I'm just not that patient. So if you look in here, you notice it's pretty splotchy right in here. And what I've done is I've taken the rough end of a whetstone and I've just rubbed it on here, rubbed it on. I use oil. I just use canola oil on mine. This is always sitting on the stove. And I'll throw a little oil on there. And I, of course, don't have my whetstones with me, but Here's a slurry stone to give you an idea. I'll just run that around, you know, until it starts getting smooth and I'll add oil and I'll get a buildup of that iron, those little iron flakes coming off and I'll wipe it down and I'll add some more oil and I just keep doing this. And it takes a while because, you know, cast iron isn't, isn't soft, but I've taken off all the high peaks on this to the point it's not as smooth as I'd like it to be, but it's smoother than it was. And I've gone back over with some oil and retreated kind of where I've, where I've roughed it up. Some people like the lodge finishes, some don't. I'm on the fence. Um, since I'm taking half, part of it off, I'm having to do my own finish anyway. But this little baby rolls in at probably about 11, 11 and a half pounds. My scale doesn't go that high. I think my scale stops about 10 and a half. So, yeah, this isn't a, a dainty piece of, of utensil, but still working on it. I might take a, fi a, a stone to it again. You know, that was taught to me. I came up, I guess, in the old school uh, where all the old farts were sitting around the campfire at night telling their tall tales, and they all had their prized cast iron pieces. Most of them were Dutch ovens. A few of them had grills or griddles, but... You know, so I guess I learned from the best and, you know, that's always kind of stuck with me. I used to work summer camps and Boy Scouts and, you know, the first of the week we'd send out all the Dutch ovens all pretty and clean and oiled up and we'd get them back at the end of the week and they were just beat and stuff burned into them and really not loved or cared for much. So what did we do? We had to redo them. A lot of times it was, we didn't throw them in the fire then and, and try to take all this off we just take and go out and scrape them as good as we could to get some steel wool or some steel wire and we'd just scrub the living bejesus out of them until they were clean enough. Then we'd go through, make sure they're all dry. Then we used Crisco at the time. So that was, you know, back in the day and that way it kept longer too and didn't go rancid usually. I've tried flax oil. People recommended it. I don't like it. I don't like the smell. It smells like old fish. I'm sitting here with some right now, and actually, I think it's rancid now. Um, I won't give it away, but there's the bottle. It wasn't a cheap flax oil. I used it on one skillet just as a test to see what happened, and wasn't happy at all with it. So I went back to my trusty canola oil, and. So what I've done with this one is, this one has spent the last couple of weekends uh, on a gas grill um, keeping empanadas warm. 
So that was a fun time. So this is my other piece of cast iron ware, which probably most people use as cigarette um, ashtrays. Uh, they say it's a spoon holder. I use it to put my, my oil rags in. So I've got a little oil in here, and what I'll do is I'll just take that canola oil, and I'll just rub it in. And this is what I do after every use. Every time I use a piece of cast iron, I make sure it's good and dry. I'll probably put it on the stove for a little bit on a medium heat to dry the water off. Some people put it in the oven. Uh, I don't do that just because I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> I'm not knocking that theory. There's all kinds of theories out there. I'm just showing you what I do. So that's got a good, you can kind of see, uh, maybe you know, get my finger in there. You can kind of see there's a good coating on it. You don't need a whole lot, just enough to coat it and keep it from rusting. And you can see that sheen now too, more so. That's why I didn't oil it beforehand. I want you to see that. So that's pretty much it for the, for the griddle. And I just toss that right back in there. And I'll leave that for the next time because I usually cook with my skillets or my cast iron four or five times a week. You know, not counting breakfasts. So that's that. This is probably my favorite. It's not going to show up in this camera now, is it? This is probably my favorite skillet. This is an old lodge. Um, you can see and you can hear, that's a lot smoother sounding. But if you kind of look around the edges, this one, I took a whetstone to, I probably had this one 35 years. Um, it came from, you know, the place we all love to hate, but it was a lodge casting. And this is a hefty piece too. It weighs in about seven and a half pounds. From here to here is 12 inches. So it's a full 12 inch. Um, I can do just about anything in this from spaghetti sauces to bacon to eggs to hash browns to you name it, I've done it in there probably. Um, it's a nice piece. I This also just got done, so I'm going to throw a little oil on it too. And like I said, when I first got this one, this is before the, I think the, the sand castings got really bad, but this one was a lot smoother, I remember, and didn't need near as much honing or you know, whetstone work as, as the, the grill did. So that's pretty much that. And, you know, just kind of give you a little spiel on it. And there's the, the label. I probably can't get uh, probably upside down is what it's going to be. Let me do it this way. <laughs> there. So there's the place we all love to hate. But it's a nice, thick, that's a heavy skillet on the backside. That's got a lot of heft on the ground. This is another guy I have. This is what you call a heritage piece. This is a Griswold. They haven't made Griswold since, and I'm sure somebody's gonna correct me, but the 60s? You know, it's, and you can hear how smooth that is. And if you feel around here, you're not feeling like that last skill. The edges were still a little rough where I couldn't get that whetstone up in there. These came this way. These were smooth. These didn't take years and years of running your, your um, spatula across it to do anything. And right there, there is the Griswold label. Let's see if I can get that straightened up for you. Right there. And I'm kind of looking at a funky angle here, so I'm just gonna do it like this too. We'll get both sides. You know, that, that's a Griswold. A lot thinner. This is 11 and a quarter inches from there to there. A uh, little bit smaller, a little bit thinner. This one weighs in about four pounds, a little over four pounds. Um, but still, it's a beautiful piece to cook with. It really even heat, even though you don't hear near the heft in here. It's definitely worth, you know, if you find them or if you seek them out, they're good to go. That's my little one. Um, right now I don't have any Dutch ovens or I'd show them to you, but I started out cooking as a kid. Probably before I was cooking on a stove, I was cooking on a Dutch oven. Um, you know, cobblers, stews, chilies, you name it, I could cook it. Uh, 10, 11 years old. And 
Well, even, you know, just cooking on an open fire more so, but the, the Dutch oven kind of came with it. Um, these days I prefer the Dutch ovens without the three legs in the bottom and the rounded lid because most of what I cook now is on the stove versus on the fire. And those are much more conducive. I'm trying to talk myself into a big lodge Dutch oven right now. I think it's their 14 inch or something. Um, it's a good hefty piece, but haven't quite pulled the trigger on that yet. So that's pretty much said what I wanted to say. I uh, thought y'all might be interested in that. Let me know what you think. And if you like it, great. If you don't, then give me some constructive criticism. Bye. You're Indian Peaks Explorer saying goodnight.